Welcome back everybody. In this video I'll be starting to make the combat in our game. If you remember last time we strung the game together and we uh, talked about what might be in this starting area as a altar or a, like an upgrade area. Um, we also linked this together so that we now have little slug things moving around. Um, and then we also have this area which would then lead us to the dungeon area which when we'd want it so when we go through this door it then takes us to one of the random uh dungeons so let's first talk about what i've done but be between that last episode and now i've been i've put together some more things so this is what i wanted the altar to be it's just a table and uh, these are meant to be little candles uh, i've made a little character that's like a, a skeleton head and on a pile of ash uh, and i'm thinking he'll be like you know how i said last time like the wizard that tells you uh, what you can upgrade and lets you save the game uh, and then I've made another enemy it's just a, like a fire imp and I've just made it so it's a fire shape and it's got like angry eyes so you look so it looks bad um, and then with the slug I I made it so it's it's animated now so when it moves in a direction it should you know update to the right uh, frame I, I still need to implement that but this is the artwork for it uh, and I what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to make a little altar to see what it looks like. Okay, so it's just a basically a table. Um, and then I'll make the the little pile of ashes guy stand right next to it. So I'll save that and export it. Okay, so now we have a little table here. I'm going to add some collision to it just so we can't uh, bump into it. Um, and then now we can start thinking about the upgrade guy. Uh, obviously, he's just an actor. And he is the pile. Uh, I'll make him have the skeleton, uh, you know, palette. I also might paint on, um, in this scene, the skeleton palette onto the uh, outer table, just because it's, you know, the black and white colors. And uh, it's kind of like the colors I was thinking in my head, like a white tablecloth. Uh, so we have this little guy, and obviously you can see that maybe the table is too big. So that's definitely something to think about. I'll put him next to it. Um, and then I'm going to change these slugs as well. This is going to be this is going to be where we do most of our testing of our uh, mechanics in this area. So let's just change it to the animated slug, and let's uh, move these out of the way. So we have this little guy, and uh, what I want to do is make him move around randomly. And I'm just going to delete this stuff. And I'm going to have a math function, and I'm going to set it to random between 0 and 3. Actually, I'll put between 1 and 4, because I imagine each you know 1 to 4 is like a compass value. Actually, I've had another idea. I'm going to set... Uh, two different values, the local 0 and the local 1, I guess, uh, between 1 and 2. Uh, ooh, actually, I'm going to set it between 3. So what I'm going to do is 1 makes you move left, 2 makes you do nothing, and 3 makes them move right. Uh, so the idea is we'll have the x value and the y value, so they can move basically anywhere they want. Uh, so let's do that again here, and have it local 1. And then we'll have if, uh, yes, we need a switch. So when local value is, yes, yeah, so local zero, the number of options is three. So we got one, two, and three. We can disable the else. Uh, so we just want to, we can even rename these. I'll move, I'll call this one uh, move x. And this one, move y. The reason why I'm using local variables is because I want to be able to copy and paste this around. Uh, and if I was to make it have global variables, then they'd, each of these would be using the same value and would they might move together, you know, in sequence. Like imagine they're both using the same value. They'd both move left at the same time, uh, and it wouldn't it wouldn't look very, uh, you know, natural. So I'm just setting that to move x and move y, and then so when this value is 1, we just move relative, and we set it to minus 1, 
And when it's two, we do nothing. So actually we can remove that one and I can set this as free, set that as two. Uh, so it does nothing. We don't need that extra switch value. So let's paste this one here. And I pasted that by the way, I obviously copied it, but if you hold control when you click on the paste event, uh, actually you see, if you see add event, if I hold control, it changes it to paste event. And that's how I speed up my workflow. Uh, so we're changing this to one. So that's the X. And then we can copy this whole thing and then put it beneath it and call it move Y, obviously, because we're using that value now. And then have this one zero and this one minus one. And this one's obviously moving up. That'll be moving up. And then this one will be moving down. So very simple. And if we press play, we should be able to see that in action, but let's paste them around and see what happens. Okay, so we got a little we got a little pile of ash guy up here. Uh, I've got the table. I might put the uh, collision onto the bottom of the table as well. And you see this? They're all moving around. And obviously, to the guys of you that have been paying attention, you probably know I should have pressed use collisions. That's why we test the games. Um, what else? Let's hop back in and see what happens. So obviously they should be walking. In. I I haven't re-set uh, the game, so they're still walking around out there. But they're moving very fast, and obviously we can slow them down by adding a weight. Uh, but that's kind of I kind of like this. This is like a kind of creepy stuff. You know what I mean? Like they're unpredictable. Um, if we if we were smart, we could also chain these together and say, you know, if if they're both one, then they move diagonally, and if they're both three, then they move diagonally. If they're one and three, then they move diagonally. Uh, but this is the simplest way of doing it. It's just it moves left or right first, and then it moves up or down. And I think it I think it does its job. Uh, maybe different enemies can move differently, but for now this uh, works, especially since that uh, we can't have like diagonal, uh, like the character can't walk diagonally. So it makes sense that everything else can't as well. Makes it a bit more predictable. Okay, so we now have an animated slug moving around. Uh, I will input the weight value though, just for the sake of um, the fact that they're slugs and meant to be kind of slow and easy to kill. So if you see, I put I put one before the move left and right, and one before the move up and down. Um, I won't test that yet because it doesn't really matter that much. But now we're going to be thinking about how we're going to implement the Zelda combat that I did in my other videos. Um, so let's get thinking. First of all, I, I feel like we should uh, start with nothing, possibly. So I'm thinking we have to pick up something, right? So I reckon we have to pick up a bone, and then that's our weapon at the start. You know how in the last uh, Zelda tutorial stuff I was making it like a swing of the sword I'll make it like the swing of a bone instead just to keep the consistency between the uh, you know the skeleton world I'm creating okay so I've got a 16 by 48 size uh, thing here and the idea is that it has three sprites on it and it will be the up down left and right uh, hitting sprites but first of all, I'm going to duplicate this little slug just so I can get the 16 by 16. And we can make this the bone that we pick up. I'm going to make it a bit Minecrafty in the sense. Actually, should I make it Minecrafty? I was going to have it, you know, diagonal with the um, with like the bone on top and whatever, you know, like this. But I don't think that will fit the art style. And I kind of want to keep this consistent. And the more consistent I do it now, the less I have to change later. But uh, it might be that I don't want it to be like this. But let's see. So the player, let's open up the player. The player's arms are only like two or three pixels long. So maybe I should do double that, but diagonally. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, we can kind of keep this like this. Uh, I think that works, but obviously it doesn't really look like a bone. Actually, if you look in the uh, thing here, it does. 
I think I'll just live with that for now. Uh, obviously, the main thing is if it stands out against the background, I might want to put an outline around it if it doesn't. So before I make the swinging bone, I'm just going to check to see what this looks like in the game. Okay, this looks pretty good. Maybe it can be next to him, you know, and it can say... Obviously, you pick it up before you talk to him, I guess, because it will be in the way of him. Um, so let's just have on interact, you picked up a bone. Uh, and I can even make it so it has a value on it. So math functions, and I just set something to true. I'll set the global variable of zero. Um, actually, I might teach you guys about flags. I'm going to use flags. Uh, so let's set flags or add flags, sorry. Uh, and I'll tell you the difference between them as well. Set flags and also why you would want to use uh, specific things. So uh, setting flags, for example, if I set flag one and four, then basically I've got two true values, right? Uh, this is true, this is true, and anything else I tick at is true. Uh, and the idea is if I set it, I'm also setting this to false, okay? So when you set a flag, you are either set everything in it, you're either setting to true or false. So by adding a flag, I'm only I'm only adding the tick. I think I can remove flags. I'll type in flag and see what comes up. Uh, clear flags. Yes, so this is the opposite of adding flags, where I, I tick the ones I want to clear, I think. I haven't used clear flags, but I can imagine that's how it works, and it would make sense. Um, you can shout at me in the comments if I'm wrong. Uh, so what I'm going to do is basically call this value, I mean this variable, this variable zero, a global variable that can be referenced from anywhere in the game. I'm going to call it game manager, just because that's the kind of thing that we'd call it in real game development. So the game manager like keeps track of the main uh, like aspects of the game. For example, you, the player's health and stuff. So that's why I'm calling it the game manager. So you have to now remember that flag one is the bone. So I can then ask on this thing, if flag, if variable has flag, flag one, and we know that that's the, the bone flag, uh, then we can put it here and it will move to the next scene. But if it doesn't, I'll say you should uh, get a weapon before entering. So what this does is stop the player from moving to the next level until they have this bone. The reason why I want to do that is so that the bone is a weapon and obviously you don't just go ahead and die. Uh, when we do input the um, the combat, we can make it so, you know, if it doesn't have that flag, then you don't swing the bone. That's a very simple uh, thing I could do. Um, but that's something for you to keep in mind. I'm going to keep it even simpler, but just by having this, like, basically a lock on it. Oh, and also on initiate, I want to... Like, if I come back into the scene, I want this bone to be hidden. So, if flag... So, if it has the flag of 1, and I'm referring to game manager... I need to also refer to the game manager on this one as well, by the way, guys. To make sure you're always referencing the right variables. Um, so, the game manager has flag 1, then it hides. I want to hide the actor. Um, and it's just the bone, so... Simple as that. I'll disable the else just because we don't need it. And okay, so that means that when we pick up this bone, we're now allowed through this door. Easy. But now what I'm going to do is make it so the player has is able to swing the bone. So I'll make that artwork. Okay, so I've just constructed the bone swings. And as you can see, it's just the bone shape. And then it has a black uh, shape behind it to indicate where it's been. Just to give it like that swoosh motion. And now I can make it so when the player picks this up, uh, it initiates the uh, script of the fighting. So we just want to attach the script to button. And we can either make the attack A or B. Uh, I can't remember which one I did in the Zelda one, but uh, I think A works. 
And if you remember what we just what we do now is we just uh had add, add the item attack. And, and make sure it's uh not the animated slug. Actually that'd be hilarious to see actually. Uh but what we're gonna do is have the bone swing. And we'll make sure the actor that is source is the player. Uh the offset, this means pixels, so I think we want it to be I think we'll leave it at ten for now. And these are the important bits. So the the collision group and collide with. Um, we can make it whatever we want, but I think we can make it collide with everything. And we can make sure the collision group is what we want. So right now we can think about what um, collision groups could be used for. So one of them will obviously have to be, you know, attacks. And another one will have to be the bomb that we want to do. And we can do another one as like a projectile, like an arrow. Um, and just because each of them might have a different, uh, like a different uh, way that it will affect either the player or or the characters in the game. So if we reserve the bomb for like three and reserve attacks like this for number one, then I think that would make sense. Uh, the main thing is we don't want it to collide with the player because obviously it's the player's, uh, it's under the player's control. If we were to, you know, imagine explode then maybe you would want to uh have the thing be an explosion that comes off us and it does hurt us and which then triggers something else um uh but we'll leave it like that for now so we can now attack using the a button and it will be on collision group one so let's think about now of what happens when these things are hit so if it can hit anything so let's think about this so i think maybe we want to have collision group two as the um as enemies i guess the collision group one will be attacks and stuff and collision group three will be explosions i think that might make a lot of sense so if this is collision group two we can think about what happens when collision group one hits it so if collision group one is the bone swing, we can just add a sound maybe, uh, or we can just have an emote bubble. <laughs> That'd be quite funny. Uh, what should we have? Let's make it have a shock. Yes. And then we'll just hide it. So then basically, actually there's a little weight in there as well, just so that it doesn't instantly uh, disappear. So when we when the swing, the bone swing hits it, it should give up an amount of shock and then wait and then hide. Uh, and this is also where we'd, you know, give the player experience and we can do it based on the player's level and stuff as well. Uh, but we'll keep it simple for now. Uh, but we'll make sure that we're thinking about the future uh, as we move forward, just so that we can, you know, easily uh, change things as we go. So I'm keeping this one so we can duplicate it around. But what we want to also do is click on the scene and say on player hit. So when the when the slug hits us, we want to we want something to happen. So this is where we also get to think uh, what does happen when the slug hits us. I think we should lose health, uh, but also we don't have any health right now because we haven't set any of that stuff up. So what I'm thinking of doing is making some artwork to display health. And I think it'll just be however many bars I can fit in is how much health that is. And then obviously we want to be able to, you know, pin them to the screen and stack them up here. And each animation frame will be a different health bar. And then that will be simple as that. So I'm going to do that. It's just a very simple piece of artwork in, in GV, I mean, in GIMP. So I'll get back to you when I've done that. Okay, so I've made it so there are four health bars here. Uh, and each, uh, basically, frame, there's one less. And then the last one we have is uh, nothing, so it's blank. Uh, so we can easily keep that as part of our uh, for thing. But actually, if you remember, I in the Zelda tutorial, I said that it would be easier if you had the zero frame as zero and, and they go up. So I'm actually going to do that right now. I'm going to make sure I put my frames in the right order so yeah so it goes four it goes zero four three two one sorry um 
we can see here. So obviously GB Studio counts from zero, then goes to one, two, three, four. So we can set the frame to the variable, basically. I've exported it into the game now. So if we press back into the game, we can change this little slug guy to the health bars. You see zero, one, two, three, four. I'll show you that again. So you see initial frame zero and then one, two, three, four. And obviously to have eight health, we can have that much. To have uh, 12 health, you can have that much. And obviously you can have 10 health by having that much. And uh, very simple stuff. It's just the question of how many actors do you want to use and how many sprites, uh, I mean frames do you want to use. Uh, obviously the more actors you use, the amount, the amount of frames stay the same. But obviously this number here of the actors starts filling up. So it's a, it's a big question of, uh, you know, optimization and everything. Uh, and obviously you could just do away with the health bars and just make it a really hard game by if you get, if you get killed or hit once, then you get sent all the way back to here. Uh, but that's obviously a choice you get to make yourself. So let's now think about what happens when uh, the health system is implemented. So this is going to be my main thing. I'll just call this health one, just so it is the main one. Um, and I'll set it to zero. And we now need to ask ourselves on initiate set frame and then make sure it's cooling it perfectly. And then we can use, see here, variable. And then we can use whichever variable we want. So I'm going to set variable one and call it health. And when we pick up the bone, I'm going to make it, um, I'm going to make it set the health. So on interact, we set math functions. We set the health value to four. So we have to set the value. And there we go. Uh, and we also want to put this on in this, although we have it on initiate, we want to put it on update as well. So every frame is checking the health and, and putting it there. The, that might not be the smoothest way to do it. If you had a lot of uh, things in your scene doing this, it wouldn't be ideal. So instead, you could make it so when you, um, you know, when you get hit by something, it it then uh, invokes the script. And if you have it on interact, then the health will uh, go up. I mean, the health will change um, because it's calling this uh, event. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin this to the screen into screen and so that should always be in the top corner i'm not going to have it touching the you know the very top or the side just just for my own uh artistic reasons um and so let's think about the slug now so when we when on hit player group two then we should it should get hit right oh, no the the slug is player group two so when in the scene on group two that's what we need to look at so this, because the slug is group two, if it hits into us, then something should happen. So we should just put math functions and we just do subtract a value of one. And we can even add a little bit of screen shake or something just because I don't want to have to. Uh... Oh, it's called camera shake. Uh, just because I don't want to have to, you know, before I had the uh, immunity thing, it's, it asked basically is immunity true and if it is it doesn't do it but if it isn't then it sets immunity to true so that it can then flash and then set it back to false uh, and that is a better way of doing it because it means you can't get hit multiple times uh, you know while you're being hit so right now we're just gonna have a camera shake so that means if the slug keeps hitting into us then we'll die quicker uh, which will make it a harder game uh, and also might be more frustrating so we'll have to change that based on on how we feel. So I'm setting the health, uh, subtract one, and then on the update, I'm going to have of the health bar, I'm going to have if value equal, actually variable compared with value. So if the health is equal to zero, then we change scene. And we just go back to the alter level. Back to this little guy here. 
and obviously we can have little checks and stuff to make it say something when that happens but what i'm going to do is just uh set i'm just going to have the math function again just before we change back i'm going to set it to uh four again just so that uh if you were to go back with less health then you would still have that less health uh, and we also want to copy this up here and uh, there is a bug that means you have to make sure that you set the animation frame to the exact thing. Instead of saying self, you put health. Uh, because the ba the, re the reason is is that uh, when you copy and paste between scenes, that, um, you know, that self-evaluation basically breaks, unfortunately. So, yeah, that isn't great, but it's uh, something you have to keep in mind when you're making games in GB Studio. That's often a bug I've, I've come into many, many times. Okay, so I think if I copy this around, it should work. If I was to copy it between scenes, it wouldn't. Uh, but let's see if this all works. I don't know if it actually does yet. Okay, so what I've already realized is it's tr it's checking our health constantly and it's it's finding out that it's, it's zero uh, because we don't set it before we come into the scene. Um, so what I'm going to do is go here and on initiate just before we change scene, I'm going to change, I mean... Oh, I, and the reason why it kept going round is because we didn't set the um, the set value to four exactly. Uh, I I am very bad at remembering to set the uh, right variable while I'm doing it. I'm just you know I get into that flow and I uh, just forget. But it's fine because it's easily figured out. The more you test, you know, the more often you test, the easier it is to sort out those problems. If I was to you know keep going and keep going then I would be like, what the hell did I do wrong? Because I, I, uh, I've, it's been so long since I worked on that exact piece that's going wrong. So yeah, I'm going to take that set the value of the health to there, and we're going to try again. So you see we have four health, and if I go try and go through this thing, let's see what happens. You should get a weapon before entering. Fantastic. So let's get the bone. You picked up a bone. Ah, I just realized I didn't hide it. You need to make sure that when you interact with it and you uh, do everything, that you then hide that actor. I uh, said you picked up the bone. I guess it could be that there's an infinite stack of them, but uh, there isn't, so <laughs> I will change that. But that doesn't matter for now, so let's... Now I've fixed it, we can go back into it. Uh, now you see we are now attacking, and because the... Um, the sprite sheet is at 10 offset, that it's uh, quite a way away from the player. Um, I'm not sure I am liking this, to be honest. It's interesting that when we're going down, the uh, bone swing is at that weird angle. I thought it'd be the opposite of the up, but it seems like it's something else. Oh, no, I, m I made it myself. Uh, I think I'll have to just rotate it. I think I just made the sheet wrong. Okay, so obviously as well we're not animated when we when we do it. Obviously that is in the uh, Zelda tutorial, and I'll probably do it next time that the that the uh, skeleton guy you know makes it look like he's moving at least. I also need to fix his legs going back and forth. I think um, that was a problem from last time. But yeah, let's go in here, and you can see now the ooh, the slugs are moving around. And you see it got hit twice, so I lost two health there. Uh, and because that's so unpredictable and so fast, it is actually quite scary, to be honest. Um, so, and I've just realized as well, I haven't got the attack. And it's because I didn't press persist between scenes here. Um, oh, note, some events like projectiles and spray changes currently don't work when used in an input script that is persistent between scenes. Ah, I haven't experienced that yet. Um... I didn't think that was a bug, but I guess it could be. Let's see if it is. If it is, then we can just, um, you know, set the correct uh, variable, you know, make it so it has the thing on the scene initiate. We give the player the chance to attack. Yeah, look, it's actually uh, using the wrong thing. 
เป็นอะไรโอเค so that in that case I'll show you guys how to fix that um, since we we have the you know the test to see if the player has actually I'll just turn off um, this is between scenes there uh, yeah because we have the the choice on whether or not you know the flag here tells us that we shouldn't come in if you guys didn't have that you could have on initiate um, you could you could check for that flag and then in the yes you know if it's true then then you have this otherwise you don't even have to really worry um so yeah let's try that again and see if it actually does the correct thing this time you picked up the bone yep and it works and it's still the now it works the actual uh, bone swing is working okay so what i've realized is the fact that the things still walk around when they've been hit isn't good. They should basically freeze. Uh, so I just need to have a variable in there to ask if it's moving. Ooh, I can't attack right now. Uh, oh, I know why. Because of the yeah. The, in this scene, guys, uh, the you only get the the thing only gets set once you pick up the bone. So if you come back here. And the bone's already been picked up. You can't pick up the bone to set it. So I I will have that flag thing now. I'm gonna have it so on the scene initiate. If flag uh, has flag one and it's the game manager we want, then I'm gonna make it so it has the script we were just copying around. So there we go. And if we disable it, then it would it would work. The problem with this thing though is that I'm copy and pasting this around, and if I want to change it. Then I have to change every single instance of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a custom event, and I'm going to call it I'm going to call it Bone Swing. I think we can we can change it easily from here, so it doesn't really matter what we call it. Uh, and then I'll just paste that script in, and you can see now that that is the script. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in Bone Swing, and I'm going to put it where it should be, and I'll delete this. And I'm going to go around and I'm going to replace all of these with the bone swing. And I'll show you guys that it's uh, a better, if you're going to be copying and pasting something around, it's honestly better to, you know, have that uh, built in already. Okay, so I've just replaced it all in the whole game. So let's now test it out and see if it still works, because that is a kind of like a big change, but it's a necessary change. Okay, so we can't swing right now. Uh, you picked up the bone. And there we can. We can swing now. And we can still swing. Let's go back and see if it swings now. Yes, it does. Okay, so obviously I know the problem with these little guys and there is annoying. Okay, that slug was walking through me constantly as it was technically dying, so I lost all my health. So we need to make sure that when we make uh, enemies in the future, that we we basically make them unable to move or hurt us as we uh, as when when we hit them. I can I think I actually can easily do that by uh, just turning off their um, yeah disabling collisions. If I put disable collision at the very top, it should stop it from if even if it walks through me, it should still kill them. So I'm going to change this wait time as well to like 0.2. I'll delete all these other ones and then I'll copy it back around. And you guys also might be saying to yourself, well, why don't you put these on a custom event as well? And you should and you could. Uh, the only thing is that uh, obviously I haven't yet. I definitely would in the full game, especially if um, it makes it a lot easier to update something. If I want to, if I have like hundreds of scenes with different slugs in, then it would make 100% sense to make it into a custom event and uh, put it around. But currently I'm just copy and pasting like five around so uh yeah okay so i've now got the bone again and i'm swinging it around and now let's see what happens when you do this okay so obviously it's hard to test because they are very unpredictable but i'll try and hit one and then walk into it yeah i think that worked okay yep that definitely worked you see how it wasn't screen shaking and everything so 
if you put the collision disable, then it stops the. Uh, it basically stops it from hurting you while it's technically dead. Obviously, that's a very simple combat system for now, um, and you. You guys can probably see the problems of it in it, um, but it is a start, and we've now got animated slugs. I think they look pretty nice. Um, damn it. Um, but yeah, I think that is all for now, guys. In the next episode, I might make it so we can talk to this guy, um, and he will then give us access to the bomb. I think I'll do the bomb next, just because it's been requested so much. Um, I'm not exactly sure how I'll do it, but it will require a lot of artwork, I'm thinking. Uh, so yeah, comment if and like if you want to see that. But yeah, uh, I want to thank my patrons. They'll be on screen right now. Uh, please like the video if you like the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. Comment on what you want to see next and what you think of this video. I'd be uh, very interested to hear your feedback. And uh, see you in the next video, guys. Thanks for watching.